Welcome to podcasts recorded live at the Center for Spiritual Living in Portland, Oregon. We have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the online tab. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center and its video podcasts, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living. Welcome, everyone. So glad you were here today. You know, we've been working our way through Mary O'Malley's book, What's in the Way is the Way. And uh, we've been, con- how do I want to say this? We've been contemplating this idea that perhaps we really are already in heaven on earth. Despite all the trouble that's going on, despite all the issues that we have personally, Uh, locally, nationally, and internationally, that perhaps that is nothing more and nothing less than us doing something to ourselves that is unnecessary. And last week we talked a little bit about, well, first of all, that we're not alone in this, that often we think ourselves as the pioneer that has to fix and do everything ourselves, We dispelled that myth. Thank you, Reverend Marilyn, for letting us know that, wait a minute, we are in this together, that the unity principle is in full effect here. But today I want to get back to this idea of living in this meadow of possibilities, living in this meadow of joy and peace and hope. It's the promise of all of the world's religions that we can experience heaven on earth that there is something beyond the trouble that exists for us right now. And I wanted to throw out something to you, because when I think of the meadow of uh, potential that she talks about in this book, what do I think of? Well, you know, this is probably partially my own upbringing, but when I think of that meadow, I see wildflowers, I see uh, probably ringed with Douglas firs, because we're right here in the Pacific Northwest. Uh, And I see streaming sunshine coming down, a a beautiful warm day, a day where only joy can be experienced, where, you know, children are playing in the meadow and, and families are having picnics. But I know the reality of life is that that's not what we experience from day to day. And so how do I justify these two things? How do I justify the picture of what I know is possible with the picture of what I tend to see every day? Well, I have a question for you. When the clouds cover over the sun, does it mean that the sun goes away? When the rain clouds move in, is not the sun shining just as bright? Is there not on that cosmic, that unseen side of life, still that same potential for love and light and joy and peace? And so I would suggest to you when the sun is obscured, when we're focusing in on the trouble and the strife, when we're focusing in on disenfranchisement or trouble in uh, Ukraine, when that is our focus, it's really us that's putting up the clouds. Now, I'm not suggesting that we shouldn't do that, but I would like to suggest that we have way more control over where our mind goes than we think it does. We think that we're buffeted by what's going on in the world. We think that the anger that we feel, the upset that we feel is automatic, that we don't have any control over it. And that is what takes us out of that meadow of potentiality. It is It is our own unconsciousness. If you remember the very first week we were talking about this story, the the theme was let's wake up. Let's, Let's move beyond our unconscious behaviors, our unconscious reactions to what we see, 
and bring a little more consciousness to it. And today I want to uh, give us another method, another tool uh, that we might use to regain more of that composure, to bring us back into the field of potentiality. So how do we begin moving back into the meadow? It isn't about ignoring what's going on. It isn't about not taking action. But it's about deciding, is there a point in me being upset right now? Is there a positive impact of the anxiousness or the fear or the trouble that I'm experiencing right now? And if not, is it serving a purpose? Is there a real reason for me to be upset or fearful or anxious or whatever it might be? That thing that's bringing the clouds in, that thing that's causing me to feel a certain way, is that useful, is that important? Or is there some way that I could bring myself back into that frame of mind where love is present, where possibilities for joy exist? where I am capable of doing more than just being fearful. And so uh, Mary O'Malley uh, calls it really just using our, our curiosity as a spiritual tool, our curiosity as a method by which we can bring ourselves out of thinking about a war that's thousands of miles away into the present moment where pretty much everything is going okay. In fact, have you thought about that before? I know it's our natural tendency to seek out the one or two things that isn't going right in our life. Isn't that what tends to happen? We look around our house and we notice the two or three things that are messy and, and, and need to be cleaned up and we give ourselves a little bit of a guilt trip. Well, if I was really on top of things, the kitchen would be way cleaner. Or, or we look around our office or, or where we go to work and we pick out the one person or the one, uh, I don't know, the, the one issue that's up for the, the place in the workplace, the one thing that really seems outrageous or not well. And we focus on that, not realizing that 90% of our working life is really a blessing and that we like it. So I get that that's natural, but you see what we're doing when we do that? We're actually inviting the clouds to come in and cover the sun. The sun's there. The 95% of our life that's going well is going so darn well. We're here in the midst of, of love and companionship with our friends and family. We're here in the midst of enough food to eat and, uh, and, and shelter to be in. Uh, right now I look out and I see people that are, are interested and happy, right? So why would I pick out the spot on the carpet right there and, and wish that it weren't there? Why would I invite that cloud to, to cover over the beautiful sunshine, the, the beautiful faces that I see, the loving embraces that I got when people came in today. Why would I do that? I don't know the why, but I know that on this day, I'm committed to stopping that. I'm committed to stopping that for myself, and I'm committed to at least helping those of you who would like to put aside those fears and anxieties and actually enjoy what's right in front of us. I'm committed to helping us do that. And I want to share this tool with you, but first of all, I think it's time for a joke. So a handyman, a minister, and a politician stood outside the pearly gates waiting to get in. Well, I have good news and I have bad news, said St. Peter. The good news, you all get in. The bad news, the gates are broken. I can't figure out how to make them work. Well, the builder looked at the gates and said, I, I can fix them for $10. Why $10, said St. Peter? Well, $5 for my labor and $5 for the materials. You'll be good as new. I can fix them too, said the minister, for $30. Why $30? Well, 10 for the orphans fund, 10 for the church building fund, 10 for the poor box, and then I'll get a volunteer to do it for free. 
Well, and can you fix them? St. Peter asked the politician. Well, of course, the politician said. Naturally, I can, but I'll need $110. Why $110? Well, 50s for me, 50s for you, and then for 10 bucks, I'll hire that handyman over there to fix them. <laughs> and the reminder here is that we spend all of our time trying to fix things that probably don't even need fixing. Have you thought about, uh, so, so, so I, I talked about our issue with finding the one thing always. It's like there's always that one thing that's bugging us. Uh, today, right, me, when I woke up and was reading about uh, Ukraine, the situation there, that's been the one thing that's been bugging me. I actually woke up uh, and, and I must have been dreaming about it or something. I woke up and my fists were clenched and I'm thinking, how outrageous is this? And so I've been spending a lot of my mental energy over the last 24 hours. What can I do about this? And it, it's completely taken me out of any sense of the world being right right now. And yet, isn't the world right now okay? I mean, 95% of it again, isn't it? And so it's that desire, perhaps that human desire to want to fix things, to want to have things different than they are, to want to stand up for something that's important. And don't get me wrong, if I can think of some way to aid the people in Ukraine, if I can think of some way to stand up for peace, I'm all in, but in the moment, in this moment right now, I can't fix anything. There's no point in me being upset about it. There's no point in me not realizing that there's beauty here, that there's joy here. D didn't you love the, the, me, uh, the first song that, that our, our Grace team brought us today? That lifted us out of all of our worries, didn't it? It tricked us in a way. LaRonda, you trickster. <laughs> Mary had a shame on you for tricking us. <laughs> right? It, how easily with something like beautiful music, we come outside of our own troubles, our own perceptions of the world not being right, and suddenly it is right. Suddenly there's something pulling us forward out of our desire to somehow uh, fix things that can't be fixed. Or, or to, uh, to allow our mind to be occupied when there's a beautiful world going on right now. We simply listened to the beauty. We simply listened to the message of freedom and joy. And we became it for a minute. That was them bringing us back into the field of possibilities where true freedom for all is guaranteed in that spiritual plane. And so how can we do that for ourselves? I, although I would like to think I could just phone Marietta and she'd come over to my house. I don't, well, we'll work, we'll work on that later. Is it possible? I don't know. I don't know. I, I'm sensing a connection, but I'm guessing probably not. <laughs> so I would like to present you with a great tool for doing it. You can do it all by yourself. But I'm going to ask Sandy if she would willy, be willing to come up and be Larry part two. So, so the idea is to do some, uh, yeah, let's get you a microphone here. So, so the idea is that you are going to, in a sense, reparent yourself. And you're going to do it through simple questioning. And I've, I've given you uh, some, uh, some ideas. It's really just a set of questions. Now, I could do this all by myself, but I thought it would be, I thought you might think I was schizophrenic <laughs> if, uh, if I was asking and answering the questions. But really, if you don't mind, you're just sure. re representing me, another okay. part of me. Okay. So I'll, I'll let you start. Okay. Hi, Larry. I'm your higher wisdom self here to support you. I can see something's bothering you. Something's taken you out of the meadow of possibilities. Can you tell me about any fears or anxiety you're feeling right now? Are you kidding me? Putin is putting nuclear warheads to be accessible for this current crazy war 
that he's starting. I couldn't be more angry. I couldn't be more upset. Yes, I do have some feelings, Larry. Mm -hmm. And so how do you feel about that? Uh, anger, mm -hmm. upset, uh, bewildered, honestly. Mm -hmm. I mean, I don't even think the Russian people themselves, for the most part, are in favor of this intrusion into the Ukraine. So you, it's like pick, an emo pick a negative emotion, <laughs> and I'm right there with it. Okay. So how about in your body? Can you identify any body sensations that go with that feeling? Well, I woke up with my fist like this, and I don't think it was uh, good dreams. <laughs> and I would say, too, there's just like a tightness around my face and a, a tightness in my heart. It really feels in some ways like... Um, It's an odd emotion, but almost shame. Mm. I would think that as civilized human beings, we could figure out how to sort through issues like this. And I'm almost ashamed that we haven't been able to. Mm. And so it, it, it kind of weighs me in here. It's, I, I feel, I'm probably red, am I red? Mm -hmm. uh, it's, yeah, it, it, it's like, it, in the fluorescing in my face, mm. uh, the anger and the shame involved. Mm. So are there any particular actions you can take right now to solve this issue? I don't think so. Mm. I, I mean, I need to be careful of who I elect, elect into office when that's an opportunity. Um, you know, there might be refugee aid coming up and some things like that. Certainly not right in this moment, though. Mm -hmm. I hear you. Are you able to allow this situation to just be for now? I'll, I'll, I'll be frank, Larry. There, there's a <laughs> part of me that is so outraged, I don't want to let go of it. Mm. And I realize that being this upset is not healthy. But there is that little piece of me that somehow feels that my outrage might do some good, but I, I, don't, I don't know that that's actually true. It's kind of like holding a resentment, you know? You think that somehow some good comes from it, mm. but my experience actually is that it never adds anything positive. Mm-hmm. So are you willing to let go of these feelings of anxiety and fear for now? Well, I'm glad you added for now. Mm. <laughs> for just this moment? Yeah. <laughs> we can get another song going. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm counting on that, believe me. Um, you know, Larry, mm -hmm. <laughs> um, that is kind of sensible, isn't mm. it? It's like, why, why am I allowing the joy that's in me and the hope that's in me and the peace that's in me to be derailed? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I think maybe I am willing for now mm -hmm. to let go of that. And so just in this moment then, can you try to relax your body? Oh. Particularly the body oh, parts that. you mentioned. <laughs> yes. Oh, that. You mentioned your head right. feeling tension and your yeah. heart and your chest. Oh, gosh. Maybe breathing in. <laughs> Somewhere I have a glass of water oh, here. Oh, there you go. Water is good. Um, Hydration is good. Thank you, Larry. You're welcome. <laughs> water, breathing. Uh, yes, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm willing to do my best. Okay. That's all I have to offer. Thank you for being my human self. <laughs> and thank you for being my higher wisdom <laughs> self, Sandy. <laughs> it feels good to be back into the meadow of possibility. So that's the tool. It's nothing more and nothing less than asking loving questions of yourself. If someone that you loved very much, well, in fact, think of maybe a child in your household or, or a child that you used to parent in some way, and they would come to you so upset, 
so angry. And all it took was probably a Band-Aid and your arms around them and the surety of love, and suddenly they were brought back into the present moment, knowing that joy was there, knowing that love was there. We have the power to do that for ourselves. We have the power to show love, to show peace, to show kindness to ourselves. And just by asking a few questions to take our mind off of some of the harmful effects of being stuck in fear and doubt, there will be time to take action when it is appropriate. There will be that willingness in you to stand up for things when it is the time for things to be stood up to and for. You're not, you're not saying that you're giving up on, uh, on creating a world that works for everyone. You're not saying that you're giving up on improving the world. But let us enjoy the present moment. Let us know that at any time and place, wherever you are, there is the meadow of possibilities. There is love for you. There is life for you. There is joy for you. There is freedom for you. You can feel it in your heart. Your heart can begin to calm your mind. You can clear the clouds away a bit. Not that there isn't work to do, but it doesn't need to consume us when it isn't useful. I'm going to close today with just a bit of homework. So, so next time your storyteller starts spinning things out of control, uh, the next time you feel that, well, I'm just so hopping mad, you know, have you ever, do you know what I mean about sort of ready to spit because you're mad or angry or upset or, or the world ain't right or the stupid stain on the carpet's bugging you one more time or whatever it is, and it takes you out of your joyous existence somewhere else. So your homework this week is simply to practice this idea of positive inquiry, this idea of being curious about what's going on right now. And you just have to ask yourself a few open-ended questions. How are you feeling right now? What emotions are going through your mind? Are they useful right now? Is there a reason for them right now? You can always get back to them later. You can always use them again if that outrage at some point will get you to take action in a way that's positive. Well, cool. Call it forth. But for right in this moment, if you're not going to do anything, is it healthy for that anger to be in you? Is it healthy for the anxiety or upset? I don't think so. Those are the questions you ask yourself to bring you back into the meadow, to clear out some of the cobwebs, to allow yourself to be with the people you're with. Right now, I feel so blessed. What divine music we're having today. What, what loving encounters I'm having with the people in this room. I want to be here for that. I want to be here for my family, for my friends, for my peace. And that is your homework for this week. Bring yourself back into that garden of delights, that heaven on earth. Bring yourself back into the, the meadow of potentiality by just asking a few loving questions. I'm going to close with a quote from the book and a prayer. She says, what we've been exploring here is what I call alchemy. We're used to believe that alchemy, alchemy was about changing lead into gold. But no, true alchemy is transforming unconsciousness into conscious awareness. It is about discovering how to relate to what you are experiencing rather than running from it. And simply by being curious about what's going on right now. Curiosity is the beginning of magic. The more you watch your experience with curiosity, the more you discover how to unhook from foundational ideas of I'm separate from life, and life is not safe, and I must run away from the things that trouble me, the more easily you will see that only a small part of who you are is struggling with life. The rest of you, the 95% of you, is at peace in the meadow of your own being. It is always here for you, right now and always. Let us pray.
There is one power, one presence, one life, one goodness. This one peace, this one joy, it is that meadow of all possibilities, and I claim it for myself right in this moment. I have that ability to simply let go of the mental constructs that are bothering me, letting go of that 1% of the things that aren't right, and instead embracing the 95, the 99% of my life that is so sweet. I claim it for myself right now. And I also know that it's possible for all of us to let go of trying to find and fix, to looking for the one thing that isn't right and spending our time trying to control, trying to sidestep, trying to get around and get through, and instead just allow life to be, to relish that, that 95, that 99% of our lives that are so, so very blessed. I know this capability for everyone for the hearing in my voice simply through asking a few loving questions, simply bringing us back into the here and the now that is centered in the body of God. I'm grateful for this. I let it be, and together we say, and so it is. Bless you all for being here today. So glad you're here. If you happen to be in the Portland, Oregon area, we'd love to have you visit in person. The Portland Center for Spiritual Living is located at 6211 Northeast Martin Luther King Jr. Boulevard. We have inspirational services at 9 a.m. and 11 a.m. every Sunday. We also have many programs, classes, and workshops developed just for our online audience. To find out more, go to our website at cslportland.org and look under the Online tab. We have a variety of content dedicated specifically for our online listeners. Our mission is to open hearts, ignite minds, and make a difference. If you'd like to support our center, you can donate online at cslportland.org slash donate. Our website is also the place to learn more about what's going on at the center or to contact us. Allow us to become part of your extended spiritual community. Wherever you are on your spiritual journey, you are most welcome at the Center for Spiritual Living.